a woman by the name of Gladys Aylward, born in London, England back in 1902 to a poor shoemaker and his wife, seemed destined uh, to, to serve as a housemaid for her entire life. And, and she actually did until her early 20s. It was then that she heard of a widowed missionary in China who needed somebody to help her in an orphanage over there. So she applied to the China Inland Mission. But she ultimately was rejected because of her, her lack of uh, progress in learning the Mandarin language. She was undeterred, however. In fact, she started saving every penny she could. And finally, when she turned 30, she had saved enough money to buy a one-way ticket to China. Uh, she happened to be four feet, 10 inches tall. She'd be nicknamed the little woman throughout her life. But let me tell you, from what I've read, every inch of her was packed with determination. After joining the elderly widowed missionary, the two uh, of them began to reach the neighbors who lived around the orphanage with the gospel there in Yangcheng, China. But they were ignored by everybody. But this little village happened to be heavily traveled by miners driving their mules on a trade route right past that orphanage. So these two women decided to convert some spare rooms into hotel rooms. Uh, The Chinese mule drivers, uh, however, were reluctant to stop. But one particular day, as a mule convoy was coming by, Gladys, uh, the little woman, ran out and took the bridle of the lead mule and turned it into the courtyard. And all of the mules just sort of followed. Well, food and clean rooms were ready, and the men stayed for the night. They would then return time and time again, always eager, in fact, to learn more of the gospel from these two kind women. Many of their lives were changed by the gospel. It's a good reminder to me how the church has been greatly blessed over the centuries by faithful women who serve Christ. In fact, have you ever thought about the fact that that you never read in the New Testament of a female follower of Christ denying him or betraying him or or even abandoning him. They served with faithfulness, humility, as members of what I'd like to call the supporting cast in the ministry of Christ while he's on earth. And and I got to tell you, their legacy continues to this day. The, The very next event in our chronological study through the Gospels, takes us to Luke chapter 8, where we're introduced to three faithful women. These women play a supporting role among uh, the larger group of Jesus' disciples. Verse 1 says, Jesus went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Well, here we have Jesus beginning what we could call his second missionary journey uh, throughout Galilee. And the number of followers is growing. Frankly, it's creating some rather practical challenges. Where are they going to get the money they need to buy food and provisions along the way? Verse 3 tells us that these three women, Mary, uh, Joanna, and Susanna, along with many others, provided for them out of their means. Well, apparently these women were women of wealth, and they're willing now to use their money in the service of the Lord. Now, these three women have something else in common. According to verse 2, all of them had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. In other words, all these women had been delivered personally by Jesus. The first woman introduced to us here in the middle of verse 2 is Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Now, by the way, there's no biblical connection between her and the prostitute who poured out her perfume on the feet of Jesus. We looked at that recently back in Luke chapter 7. There's no biblical evidence at all that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. The Roman Catholic Church back in the Middle Ages created that tradition without any biblical evidence. And and, and let me tell you, people have tried to make, to this day, some sort of romantic connection between Mary Magdalene and and Jesus. That's nothing but nonsense, and it's fit 
for the tabloids. Now, when Dr. Luke says here in chapter 8 and verse 2 that Jesus healed these women, the word he uses for healed is the medical term therapuo, from which we get our word therapy. This Greek verb actually emphasizes entire restoration to health. No wonder these women wanted to give their lives to following the Lord. Now, let let me just say here that Mary Magdalene highlights the Lord's ability to give hope to somebody who's, who's hopeless. She had been tormented and, and plagued in, in this uh, demonization that she endured. But let me tell you, none of, that, none of that stood a chance against the power of Christ and his saving gospel. You, you might be praying today for some hopeless case like her. Well, let me remind you. That someone's dark past doesn't hinder the Lord's ability to give that person a bright future. Jesus takes a woman who was ostracized, and he he gives her a new family. Think of it, new new brothers and sisters in Christ, fathers and mothers, a family of, of disciples committed to serving their deliverer, their Savior. Now, with that, the second woman mentioned in the supporting cast is described here in verse 3. She's Joanna, the wife of Chuza, Herod's household manager. Now, Luke doesn't tell us what illness this woman was healed from, but Luke does mention her family connections here. Her husband, Chuza, is the household manager of Herod. Uh, That is Herod Antipas, the son of Herod the Great. Uh, Therefore, uh, this man, Chuza, is a, is a rather high-ranking member of Herod's court. By the way, Luke here is, is sort of giving us a peek at the fact of the gospel, which has reached the upper echelon of society. Chuza is in charge of managing the personal property and the, and the financial portfolio of King Herod. This would have been an incredibly influential role. Chuza and Joanna, you know, they were on the Christmas list, no doubt, of King Herod. But let me tell you, Herod isn't a friend of Jesus. Remember, this is the king who puts John the Baptist to death. He's going to encounter Jesus briefly during the trial that will lead to the Lord's crucifixion. So there aren't going to be any testimony meetings or worship services in Herod's living room. But still, Luke tells us, The gospel has made its way into the king's palace and saved Joanna and possibly her husband, Chuza. You know, sometimes God reaches unlikely people in unexpected places. Now, Luke introduces us to the third supporting cast member, a woman mentioned here in verse, in the middle of verse three, simply as Susanna. And that's it. That's all we're We're told about her. We don't know anything more about her but her name. But let me tell you, being unknown is not the same thing as being unimportant. While the early church may have known her, and I have no doubt they did, we only know that she was healed by Jesus. We assume by what we're told she began following Jesus. We're told she gave of her financial means to supporting Jesus. How good is that, beloved? Being unknown on earth, then, obviously, it doesn't mean you are unknown in heaven. It kind of reminds me of Gladys Aylward, you know, that little woman who gave her life to serve orphans and minors in the heartland of of China. In fact, if you read anything about her, you'll find out that Gladys was actually surprised that God used her as much as he did given her limitations uh, physically and academically. In, In later years, she would write this particular testimony. I wasn't God's first choice for what I've done in China. Uh, There was somebody else, I don't know who it was, God's first choice. It must have been a man, a wonderful man, a well-educated man. I don't know what happened. Perhaps he died. Perhaps he wasn't willing because he never came. Then God looked down and saw Gladys Aylward. (laughs) I like that perspective, don't you? Beloved, are you tempted to think that you don't matter to God, 
that your place of service is so small and that is not worth all that much. Well, there's a wonderful little poem that gives us a better perspective. It goes like this. Is your place a small place? Tend it with care. He set you there. Is your place a large place? Well, guard it with care. He set you there. Whatever your place, it is not yours alone, but his who set you there. We could add that wherever he sets you, he also joins you. Beloved, there is no better role you can have in life than to be a simple member of the supporting cast of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, until next time, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.